What's up guys, this is Miles with SellerAmp and in today's video, I'm gonna give you a full step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use SellerAmp for Amazon FBA product research. I'm gonna give you everything you need to know to get started, what it costs, how to use it, some of the different more advanced features as well as the more basic features that I use every single day in my own seven-figure Amazon business. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. We're SellerAmp, we're an Amazon online retail and wholesale arbitrage product research tool for Amazon sellers to help you save time and money and find more profitable products. Let's get right into the full tutorial. Starting out in terms of breaking down SellerAmp here, the full tutorial, I wanna take a look at how much SellerAmp actually costs. Cool thing is there is a two week free trial for any of these plans specifically here. The basic monthly option in terms of the two different plans, there's getting started and getting serious. Getting started starts out at about $19.95 per month. Getting serious is about $28 per month. If you wanna go ahead and get the annual version and save a little bit of money, you go ahead and pay 200 bucks annually and just pay about $16 a month, specifically right here for getting started. And then about $23 a month for getting serious build annual as well. The main differentiator between getting started and getting serious is gonna be the phone app installs per account, the Chrome extension installs, and then mainly gonna be the 1,000 lookups per month on getting started versus getting serious, which is gonna be unlimited lookups. Each SellerAmp subscription gives you access to all the SellerAmp features. So the mobile app for retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, Chrome extension, which we'll mainly be talking about in this video, as well as the web app feature as well. So the basic version, you can go ahead and get a free trial and just get started with the getting started version for $20 a month about at our website, selleramp.com. So if you're just getting into this, you can start with the basic plan. And then once you hit the lookups criteria, you can go ahead and upgrade to the getting serious as well. Let's dig into the settings on SellerAmp. Next, we're gonna to wanna to take a look at your settings within SellerAmp. This is really important to get set up prior to actually using the Chrome extension. The way you're gonna get here is going to selleramp.com, signing in, going to the top right, hitting the drop down menu, and then going ahead and hitting the settings. It's really important because what SellerAmp does is it actually calculates the profit you're gonna make on a specific product, but that's based on the criteria that you put in on your specific settings. So for example, the buying criteria is the first thing you're gonna to wanna to put in. If you were a newer seller, you might just wanna copy you know, what you see here, zero to 1% sales rank. That's just showing the top sales rank percents you wanna take a look at. Most people just do zero to one. On that, above 1% tends to be a little bit slower selling. And such, minimum profit per sale, $3. This is fairly standard, although obviously for some cheaper products, $2 profit per unit can totally be cool if you're paying $2 and such. Minimum ROI, 30%. You definitely wanna go a little bit higher than that on shoe products, but for most standard things, 30% is cool. Here's where it gets into state specific numbers, and that's going to be in the prep fee if you're using a prep center. However, if you're a newer seller, you're probably not using a prep center yet. The MISC fee percent, this is typically where people put in their sales tax. So say you live in Texas, for example, it would be 8.25%. And then the big thing here is that this automatically factors in on your seller amp calculator, so you don't have to put sales tax in twice. That's a big mistake a lot of beginners make is even though they put in their sales tax on seller ramp in the back end, they're also factoring it in and doing mental math on the Chrome extensions. So they're actually paying sales tax twice, or at least calculating sales tax twice. And that's incorrect. And it leads them to pass on a lot of items they should be taking. You can find your sales tax rate on Google. Inbound shipping costs, this is actually factoring in your shipping to Amazon. If you're doing online arbitrage, most of the time, orders from your supplier are going to be shipping cost free. However, when you're shipping in Amazon, Obviously, you do have to pay. We can see here 60 cents per pound. This it tends to be fairly standard. Long term, you'll be below that most likely. And then you can do your inventory placement. We recommend just using Amazon Optimized Splits to start based on the current rules right there. For the most part, other than that, it's pretty standard um, in terms of taking a look at this stuff and everything. The buy box analysis feature might be off on your version, depending on when you've recently got it. So we do recommend turning on that as well. But the big thing in settings is gonna be setting in your buying criteria, as well as your prep center cost or your sales tax rate, depending. And your inbound shipping cost is gonna be very important to add as well. Let's jump into how the Chrome extension works. So it's important to note the Chrome extension for online arbitrage and the mobile app for retail arbitrage are included on that one same subscription as well as the web app. Going to walk you through how all that stuff works here as well. But the, <laughs> the retail arbitrage mobile app is the exact same thing as the Chrome extension. It's the exact same functionality. And such we can see over here, there's some friendly debate on social media about where SellerAmp actually belongs on your screen. So we can see lots of different stuff here. We can hide it wherever you want. You can even drag it out here further as well. Right off the bat, the main things you're going to be taking a look at is going to be the quick info up here. We can see the title of the product, 
the ASIN, otherwise known as Amazon Standard Identification Number, the UPC number as well. We can see the weight. This is really important for calculating merchant fulfilled shipping as well. And then we can see the description of the product, not super important. We can open up the Amazon product page. However, we're obviously already on it. If you want to look up and see where you can find this product profitable, you just one click, then it types it into Google Shopping as well. And then you can try to make that item good, as well as we can open up the SAS web app here, which we'll take a look in a sec. The eligibility, this is based on ungating. You want to sign in. This is really, really important, especially when you're doing retail arbitrage as well. We can see the different alerts here, specifically on this one that it has variations. We can see the best sellers rank and the estimated sales. It's important to note that if a listing has variations, which this one does, the estimated sales is for that entire listing, not that specific variation. How you're going to gauge variation how you're going to gauge variation performance for that specific product is going to be taking a look at the specific keep it chart that seller amp displays on that now max cost here this is very very important this is how you're actually going to tell if you're profitable we can see we had a 30 percent minimum roi here so if we type in 15 dollars and 93 cents and exactly match the max cost that's going to put us at a 30 percent roi remember you don't want to factor in sales tax twice sales tax and shipping amazon are already factored in if you add them in your settings so we can see if we could pick this up for 13 dollars and 50 cents we make seven dollars and 22 cents profit after everything and a 53 percent roi and a 26% net profit. Another important thing to note is you can do math in SellerAmp as well. So say you had a 10% coupon and we were picking this up for 16, you can actually multiply this by 0 0.90 and take that off. Say you wanted to take off 20%, you do 0.8, 30% times 0.7, et cetera. You can also do subtraction here as well, addition here as well, and multiplication here as well. So really, really important, especially when we're dealing with like bulk coupons, and stuff like that's very, very helpful. Offer summary, a lot of people don't know you can actually customize your tiles on SellerAmp as well and move them up and down in your settings. I like having the offer summary up here so I can see how FBM friendly or not FBM friendly a listing is based on if other people are FBMing it. The ranks and prices right here, you get most of this from the quick info. Some people really do like this data here. We can see the averages over time in terms of BSR, buy box price, lowest FBA, lowest FBM, keep a BSR drops, et cetera. You can go and refresh that data whenever you want. The alerts panel right here, this is pretty important in terms of seeing if something's like hazmat, if Amazon's sharing the buy box. If any of these are alerting though, it'll tell you on the alerts panel at the top. Um, as well, this is really, really important, especially for retail arbitrage in terms of gauging a product's performance, taking a look at the chart right here. So we can actually see over time, you know, how this product has performed for an entire year with the buy box price on the top chart, as well as the demand and the sales rank. Obviously, we want the sales rank, the lower, the better. We can also see the monthly sold. It's interesting how sometimes that'll vary. If you take a look at like a soccer product, for example, the monthly sold will be way higher during soccer season in July, August, September, et cetera. And then obviously, you know, a backpack listing will be selling very badly during November when obviously school is going on, school is not starting. Hoodies will be selling slower during the summer, et cetera. In terms of gauging performance of specific variation, this is where we want to take a look at the offer count movement here on the bottom chart. The more offer count movement, the more something's moving specifically here. Then we can go down here and take a look at the prof calculator to see a full fee breakdown as well. So we can pick this up for 13 bucks. We make $7 profit, 60% ROI. There's our max cost like we saw in the quick info right here. And then we can also go ahead and plug in quantity as well. So we do 10 units going to be like $77 profit specifically right here as well. The variations features in beta right now, but we can go ahead and see the performance of the different variations here as well. The notes feature, you could add a note to a specific ASIN, which is pretty helpful as well. Then we'd see the percent discounts if you want to plug those in and not do just the multiplication and such. We can go ahead, take a look at that. Just change it right there in terms of specific cost right here as well. And then we can also see the Google Sheets feature is really helpful here too. A really, really important thing that a lot of beginners mess up is they'll find stuff all the time that's close to being good. Like this product, for example, here, it's buy box net 31 right here. And then we can see over on the Adidas website, it's going for 16, right? So if we go ahead and plug this in at a 16 cost, we're at about $3 profit. That's not bad. The sales rank is good as well. It's about 20K. The problem is the ROI is a little bit low. 
However, where most people mess up is that they just keep going about their sourcing session, right? When meanwhile, what you should be doing is you should be using the one-click export feature on this on Celeram to one-click export this out to an almost good spreadsheet, for example. And now that data automatically populates here. And we can see June 4th right here, this is obviously an example. And then we could go ahead and add the cost here and say, if this hits 35 again, this is good, right? And that's really, really important because we're already taking all the time to find these products. We might as well capture the maximum lifetime value we can and that we can see not too long ago here, guys, this was buy boxing at 36 bucks, which at a 16 cost is absolutely not bad. It's about eight dars profit and a 50% ROI. So it's really, really important to be taking advantage of the Google Sheets feature as well, specifically creating like an almost good and out of stock spreadsheet, maybe a back to school sheet, a Q4 lead sheet, ton of stuff like that. And then any specific retailer ones you like, I have like a shoe replans one, beauty replans one. Some of these are obviously just examples though as well. So definitely don't sleep on the Google Sheets feature as well. Could also go ahead and list the proc directly on Seller Central too. And we can also see our lookup history for a specific product right here as well. The buy box analysis feature is really helpful in terms of gauging where you should actually price a product. It's really important to note that all the time you're going to run into examples of listings where you can sell above the lowest price. Don't just price at the lowest price if you're a new seller. Look at where the buy box is actually going, which is going to come from looking at the chart up here and taking a look, seeing if people are grabbing buy box share higher. We can see in this case, we can see the buy box is 29, lowest FBA is 28. Right, and we can see that's an extra dollar and forty cents profit per sale. Right, there's going to be some even more drastic examples here. We can see, yeah, literally, buy box thirty three, lowest FBA twenty two, and that's just due to sellers being in back order. So basically, they recently shipped their inventory into Amazon. Amazon's listing it live, but the delivery dates show really far back because their inventory is still being moved around in the warehouse here. So it's really, really important to take a look and use the buy box analysis feature to price where the listing is actually showing buy box here. So we can see just now these two sellers, yeah, one of them at about 30 bucks, one of them at about 28. This seller is getting two extra dollars profit per seller here, just on the basis of understanding and pricing where the buy box is actually going and not just matching the lowest price, which is really helpful as well. Another thing you're gonna to run to a lot as a new seller is potentially looking into doing merchant fulfilled on specific products. Now where a lot of sellers go wrong with merchant fulfilled in Selleramp is they try to just subtract the shipping cost right here, which means they're paying the FBA fees and the FBM shipping costs, which is not the way you wanna do it. What you wanna do instead is scroll down here on Selleramp and actually toggle this over to FBM right here. And then you need to add in your FBM cost right here, which is going to come from looking at the weight up here. We can see this weighs about 0.32 ounces. So if we scroll down here on seller amp, that's going to ship for about four bucks right here. And we can see it's about eight dollars profit, 70% ROI compared to FBA in this item, which would be a little bit better on this specific product right here. So if you want a full breakdown of estimated FBM shipping costs correlated to weight, I have a good guide for you guys at howtofbm.com that'll break that down specifically right there. But the FBM calculator is really, really helpful because when you do FBA, you pay FBA fees, but you don't pay individual shipping costs. When you do FBM, you don't pay FBA fees, but you do pay individual shipping costs and you need to make sure you're calculating that correctly, guys, as well. Now, the main feature of Selleramp that I'm using every single day on top of the profit calculator is gonna be the storefront stocking feature, which is basically looking inside the storefronts of other sellers to see what they're selling. This is definitely the best way to do product research as a beginner. A lot of beginners think the best way to do product research is going to random websites and clicking the clearance section. Instead, what makes a lot more sense, guys, is to go ahead and open up all the storefronts of other sellers right here specifically so we can go ahead and see everything that they carry in their specific Amazon storefront here, right? So some people open up just based on review counts. I just kind of open up everyone, to be honest, and such right here. So now we can see the different sellers here, we can see their rating count. So we know how much money they're making. The more reviews, the better. We can see their ace count right here as well. And then we can also see all their favorite brands right here that they sell, as well as all their favorite categories as well. And we can actually filter to those too, right? So for example, this seller here, you know, Pamper Chef is a good auto one gate product, for example, here, right? So now we can see all the different fastest selling Pamper Chef products. And so the quicker moving products show at the top, right? So it filters to what's you know, moving the quickest and such based on the lowest sales rank here. So we can see this listing is a 66K BSR and then the max cost here is 13. What I'm looking at basically is making sure that the price isn't drastically shooting down. Like in this case, it's not. 
in this case, it's actually going up here, right? And then all we go ahead and do is one click Google this to see if we can find this thing profitably. So we can see this is the right thing here, 13 bucks. Actually looks like that would be pretty close to being profitable right here. We could go ahead and filter into Nike stuff, for example, here too. Then we can see whatever the max cost is here that's gonna pop up, 20 bucks right there. I don't really think we could pay 20 bucks for that. We'll go ahead and plug this in and see what we can do specifically right here. And sometimes obviously the title isn't gonna be correct. That's just kind of how the systems work and such. We can see like these 800K rank, that's too high, that's too slow selling. Unfortunately right here. So that's how storefront stalking works basically. Looking inside the storefronts of other sellers, identifying their products that are moving quick, and then going ahead and seeing where you can find those specific items on Google, specifically right here. If you're doing wholesale on Amazon, another good feature, you can definitely also do storefront stocking for wholesale too, or online arbitrage, or honestly for retail arbitrage as well. Really good feature for wholesale is going to be the SellerAmp web app, which is also included with that one subscription here. What the SellerAmp web app lets us do is actually see all the data here really nicely laid out and organized as well here, guys. So we can see like the profit calculator. We can see the charts as well. See the offers to open up storefront stocking too, buy box analysis, Google Sheets, and it just kind of opens it up in one specific place um, right here as well. The main features of Seller Amp you're most likely going to be using are the Chrome extension for online arbitrage, the profit calculator, and the storefront stocking, otherwise known as reverse sourcing feature here. Taking a look inside the storefronts of other sellers, then definitely the retail arbitrage mobile app for getting out there in stores and scanning products as well. So if you're just looking to get going with Seller Amp, the first step is going to be get a free trial on our website, selleramp.com, and then going ahead and configuring your settings correctly and then get started doing some storefront stocking from a Nike listing or the Adidas slides we took a lot at or any type of proc that you can see other resellers making money on like that Thrive item, for example, there and such. If you guys have any questions, let us know down below. We love helping you guys grow your businesses and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching this Seller Amp tutorial.